This is the Retirement Key Podcast with Abe Abish, founder of Abish Financial Services. Thanks for joining us here on the Retirement Key with Abe Abish, founder of Abish Financial Services. I'm Heather Branch, here to ask for his ideas on ways to better prepare for your financial future. All the questions that come along with everything that's involved in planning for our retirement is what Abe and his team are here to help you figure out. The retirementkey.com is where you can go to begin your own conversation with the team at Abish Financial. We also have links posted in the show notes, so you can just click there. Or again, it's the retirementkey.com. As I was just saying, there is so much it's put upon the American investors and, and planners. We have to do it ourselves nowadays more than ever before. And I think that that's why it's gotten so complicated to boot longevity, right? The, how much longer we're living gratefully, but now we've got to plan for, and most people used to plan for what, 10 or 15 years of retirement. That's basically doubled. Has it not? Yeah, I would say a lot, I would say 30 years for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. That's what we have to factor in. Thing is though, it continues to get more and more complicated, Abe, as if I had to explain that to you. Let's talk about what's coming out of Raymond James and Charles Schwab. They are reporting a decrease in revenues due to people moving to higher yielding money market accounts and CDs. And as it would turn out, if given the choice of high returns with high risk or reasonable returns with less risk, people are choosing the low risk route. But the problem is, and again, getting back to what's complicated, especially when we have to factor in our longevity and things like inflation and high interest rates now, can being risk averse hold somebody back from having the growth that they might need in their retirement years? You know, Heather, we've been saying a lot lately, you can win by not losing. Okay. You can win in your retirement by not losing, yeah. especially avoiding large loss. So what's going on right now is with interest rates having gone up 11 times, we can get some pretty attractive yields on especially safer instruments outside of the market, right? You can get 4 or 5% outside of the market without stock market risk. You could walk down to the bank and get you know, 4 or 5% on the CD and a money market and things like that. Mm-hmm. And so it's giving, a, I think, a lot of people some pause because if we can get you know, more attractive yields than we could get before, should we then take on a lot of risk in the market, right? We need to be in the market long term, but to what extent, to what degree, especially if you have enough saved, right? If you have enough saved and we determine that with you, and let's say it's two million bucks or a million bucks, and this is more than enough, you know, to generate all the income you need to pass on money to your family, then then why continue to take on any extra risk than necessary? We don't want to do that. We want to take on prudent risk for this next season of your life. So we just had a couple call into the show and come in from Bethesda, Maryland, and they have about a million dollars saved, and they're in their late 60s, retiring at 70. They're a four on our risk scale, so conservative investors that value protection, preservation, you know, more than a big return, right? Because, if, again, if they have enough money saved and they've got a large real estate portfolio on top of it and it's generating nice rental income, why then would they want to take on a lot of extra risk in the market? Right. And they've come to that realization that, this is where they are in life, and they've done a good job, and so now they just want to protect it, preserve it, have it go to each other you know, in the most tax-efficient way, and to their autistic son mm. in the most tax-efficient way, yeah. because he can't make decisions on his own. They have a special needs trust for him, so that was one of their biggest objectives, is passing money on to their autistic son in the most tax-efficient way way possible. So they came into our office, called into the show, came into the office, Heather, because of a lot of things. They were taking on too much risk at a big box firm without any guidance outside of their investments, wanted tax planning because what they wanted to do was start paying the tax bill on some of their IRA monies now so that when they pass away, they can pass tax-free dollars onto their autistic son. They wanted Social Security guidance, legacy planning for their son, and when we did the analysis on their whole portfolio, we realized, and they realized, they were invested as if they were an eight, or 80% stocks, 20% bonds, and they wanted to be a four. And and with that, because they realized after our meetings that they are going to be okay, they are the type of couple that would be happy with a four to 5% return. This conversation was just pointing out that's what yeah. the, these Charles Schwab and Raymond James investors are finding out. People are exactly preferring right. less risk. Exactly right. And while these more attractive yields and returns and rates, you know, on safer instruments may not be around forever, and they usually aren't, right. uh, we can certainly take advantage of them now where it makes sense. So that's exactly what this couple has realized. Hey, I don't have to take on a lot of risk. We don't need to take on a lot, a lot of risk. We want to enjoy our retirement and not worry about the stock market and CNBC and wondering whether we're going to get our check 
next month or not, right? So the solution for them was to put together a comprehensive phase two plan. Believe it or not, more than 90% of our industry is focused on that phase one accumulation, investment-based, wealth accumulation-based plan. That's not wrong, but again, if you're here at the point of retirement and you have enough saved, then let's stop putting so much emphasis on just growth, and the emphasis on everything you want to accomplish in the second phase of your life. Uh, that's that phase two plan. Social security guidance, tax planning for Roth conversions, the legacy planning for the son, consolidation, reduction of risk, and a plan to pass on monies in the most tax efficient way possible. So if you're listening right now and you are 55 years old and older and you've saved a half a million dollars or more for your retirement, I want you to go to the retirementkey.com. Click on the contact us tab at the top of that page and we can begin to have these same exact conversations about a comprehensive retirement plan with you as well. We also have links posted in the show notes so you can just scroll down and click there if that's more convenient or again find us anytime at the retirementkey.com. All right. So something else I think that happens that confuses so many of us is we've talked about national media presence and some of these men and women that give this blanket advice and people really take it as gospel. And Dave Ramsey, very well-known, popular, nationally syndicated, personal finance radio host, he recently went on the record and said some really surprising statements, Abe. He said that retirees should remain 100% invested in stocks their Mm. entire lifetime and Mm. to boot, then withdraw 8% of their portfolio every year with no worries. That should be their approach. Mm. Mm. Financial author David McKnight says that Ramsey is basing all of this on an unrealistic annual market return of nearly 12% that does not consider volatility. Here's what he said. In other words, just because you average 11.8% per year, if that's even possible, doesn't mean that you'll be getting precisely that result each and every year. And as it turns out, the order in which you experience returns in retirement is one of the biggest keys in determining whether your retirement assets will last through life expectancy. This is why economists and financial experts in academia are so opposed to willy-nilly haphazard approaches to sustainable distribution rates in retirement, because unduly high withdrawal rates can easily bankrupt you years in advance of life expectancy. And at that point, you'll have to eke out an existence subsisting on Social Security alone. Gosh, Abe, I feel like Mr. McKnight here reiterates so many of the points that you are constantly making here on this radio and podcast program every single week. Not to mention, we've had lots of conversations lately about how even just the 4% rule is out the window. That was a rule that came up in the 90s. And some banks and and financial institutions are saying scale it back to 2 or 3% withdrawal rates every single year. Right. But the 4% could still be too risky. Ramsey is saying, go ahead, 8%. That's okay. How do you see all of this? Yeah, I mean, well, if you're assuming you're going to make 12% on the market, like Mm -hmm. Dave Ramsey is hypothetically assuming, then of course you can withdraw 8. I mean, if you're making 12, then you could withdraw 10. But man, a hypothetical assumption of 12% long-term ongoing returns in the market, good grief. That's uh, way higher than we would ever predict or assume. I mean, good grief. You've got to be taking on a lot of risk. And Mm -hmm. not that it can't happen, but that is, I don't believe, prudent. I don't believe that's a prudent projection. So we are way more conservative when we're looking at, hey, what are realistic expectations for you on this side of the portfolio that might be in the market, for this side of the portfolio that might be principal protected and out of the market? And uh, we've got to be careful with those assumptions. So... And then what David McKnight was mentioning is that order of returns, you know, nine out of 10 people that come through our office doors, Heather, aren't familiar with sequence risk, that risk to a retiree that when they're withdrawing out of their market portfolios, the markets are also down incurring that double negative and double whammy risk, right? Mm -hmm. And that can be devastating. It can be terminal to a retirement plan portfolio. So we just had a gentleman come in to the office and he is single. He's got a million and a half dollars saved. Uh, He's a six on our risk scale. He's out of Fairfax, Virginia, Mm -hmm. retiring January 2025. So just about a year away. And he had no plan to turn his assets into income. Oftentimes we'll ask people, why are you even here? And they'll list off a bunch of things. Okay. Healthcare planning, tax planning, social security guidance, investment advice, you know, all these things. And one of his big things was 
turning my bucket of money into income because he knows his wages are going to be ending in just about a year. Mm -hmm. No plan to turn that accumulation into income. No plan to move successfully from phase one into phase two. That's your working career into retirement. Mm -hmm. We found out that he'll have a $40,000 income gap or shortfall which means for the first time in his life, he's going to have to pull money out of his nest egg to meet that gap. Okay. What he didn't know about was sequence risk. So one of the first things we do is we go into what that risk is and how it will affect him and any retiree the day they start pulling money out of their nest egg. Imagine you start off retirement, you've gotten to the amount of money you need to save, a million, two million, half a million, five million, and those first few years of retirement, the markets are down, and you've done what Dave Ramsey has recommended, and you're 100% stocks, and you're down 10, 15, 20, and you're like, Abe, I still need my 50 grand. You just made matters way worse. You just made that hole that much bigger and that much harder to get out of. It's hard enough to recover from loss. It's way harder to recover from loss and withdrawals at the same time, which is why you need a plan for both growth and income, a plan for both risk and safety, especially if you're at the point of retirement. Right. This is super dangerous, and we have to have a plan to protect your nest egg at the point of retirement. So if you're listening right now and you sound like this gentleman from Fairfax, Virginia, and you are approaching retirement very near, and you've saved a half a million dollars or more for your retirement, you're 55 years old and older, you're concerned about all these things we talk about on our podcast, go to the retirementkey.com, click on the contact us tab at the top of the page, and we can begin to have these same exact retirement planning conversations with you as well. You can also click on the links that we have posted in the show notes if that's more convenient. Or again, our website, you can visit us anytime at theretirementkey.com. Thanks for listening to the Retirement Key Podcast with Abe Abish. To learn more about Abish Financial Services, visit theretirementkey.com. And join Abe for his radio show, The Retirement Key, Saturdays at 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. and Sundays at 2 p.m. on WMAL. Investment advisory services offered through Abish Financial Wealth Management, LLC, number 310633, a registered investment advisor firm. Financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. To find out if Abraham Abish is licensed in your state, please call 571-577-9968. Abish Financial Services is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Abish Financial Services, Inc., Virginia Insurance License, number 127820. Thank you.